just reset this. Oh, hello. So I've made a new neck design here. Um, tried to focus on something a bit simpler. It's only got three axes, three motors, fewer parts, easier to assemble. Uh, I was aiming for something that would be a little bit more robust, but there ends up being a whole lot of backlash in this that I still have to work out, but I think that can be done with a few redesigns. Previous versions have been pretty complicated. Here, using 12 volt servos. Here, using stepper motors. Um, they work very well, but they've been very complicated to assemble. So I wanted to try something much, much simpler, easy to assemble. Sort of a different focus, I guess. I'm still very happy with these but wanted to try something different. So I've got an Arduino Nano ESP version for the brain here driving an OLED that's displaying a few different state updates, coordinates for the positions that the neck is articulating. Got a 12 volt power supply, which is routed over to this breakout board. I have signal coming from this servo board over here, over to the breakout board for the neck servos. And I'm ramping down the voltage here from 12 volts down to 5, and then routing that back over to the servo, servo board. This is for the eyelids and eventually the eye movement when I get those in there. So overall, there's going to be three motors operating at 12 volts in the neck, and five motors operating at around 5 or 6 volts in the head. So another thing I've done here is I built a very simple rig that sort of maps out the, uh, I guess, work envelope of the head here. She can rotate all around 180 degrees, move up and down about this much. You can see here uh, from the front view, got the head moving around, following the path, and the uh, rotation of this square is the uh, third axis for the face rotation. I've got this script here which just uh, parses through the timeline and exports a file with the animation data in it. So something like this here. She starts 555 five, five, right in the center. These are percentage values from 0 to 1 frame number, and XYZ position. And then here I've got a Python script to play back that data and send it via serial over to the neck. All right, I'll try playing back this animation over here. So there are still some problems. I don't know if it's just the servos themselves, but they're really struggling to move at a very slow speed. I think that just might be a limitation of the motors. There are certain speeds they work really well at, and other speeds which they do not. And here I've got a script that will do a kind of a pseudo-random uh, motion. So it'll take the animation data that I've created, and it will sort of sample it, or un undersample it really, in a really extreme way. And it'll pick a few random uh, frames from the animation 
as anchors. It'll send the head to that position and then do some sort of random poses around that location before going to the next pose and the next pose, sort of like that. So if we remember the animation I had before, she sort of moved her head up here, down here, and then back around like this. What it might end up doing is uh, it'll start here, it'll pick a few random poses, and then the next anchor that it gets will be, I don't know, maybe somewhere along this arc, maybe here. So now it's going to start picking poses that exist in a radius around that arc. So it'll go here, or maybe here, or here, looking up over here. Then it'll get another anchor somewhere along this arc down here. Uh, maybe over here or something like that. So there's going to be a sort of a statistical radius around here. So it'll start picking random poses in here. So instead of getting a, an animation that just sort of mechanically moves around like this, we can get an animation that sort of uh, jumps around in a somewhat more natural way. I don't know. It's chaotic, I guess. So I created a slightly more complicated uh, head animation rig here just to include the eyelids. So I'll create an animation really quickly here. Well, I'll create an animation and then I'll speed it up in uh, time lapse. And then we'll try playing it back. Okay, I've got everything all set up here. She's turned on. Let's test out that, that animation. So I'll press play over here, which will send all the frames. Alright, that's looking pretty good. So I don't have any motors controlling her eyes at all, so she's just sort of deadpan looking straight all the time, so it does look very strange. But once I get that uh, hooked up, there's a whole situation with that I'm not going to get into. It should look pretty good. I can put the controls for that in the cinema as well. So it should be relatively easy to create some animations for her. So, for example, when she goes to look off to the one side, having her eyes also look that way, and when she's looking over there, her eyes open up, having her eyes glance over there, it should look pretty good. Right now it looks really strange. Here, I'll play it again, because her eyes are just always looking totally straight. But you can imagine if they were glancing around in the correct way, it would look pretty good. Now I've got some limitations on the range of the eyelids. I can open them a bit further than I've been doing in the animation, so they can go a bit further out. And I can close them a bit more too, but I'm uh, a little bit leery of doing that for now. So as far as the code over here, uh, some of the basic principle of what's going on here is I'm sending all of these frames of uh, data for the position for each servo, which is extracted from Cinema 4D. Uh, and that's at about 30 frames per second. Uh, but I'm also interpolating those frames. So there's uh, some... About three frames are generated in between them. About three or two. Well, I can change it up here anyways. There's linear, linear interpolation happening. So I'm actually sending out about 90 frames per second with some generated frames. And that seems to be working out pretty well. Um, it... It basically looks okay even without the interpolation, so this might not be really necessary, but I don't know, it's working out. It does mean that I could probably export the animation at a lower frame rate, maybe just 10 frames per second, and then interpolate them here. I don't know when that situation might come up, but it's a thing that I could do.